So in the first chapter of this hair tutorial, we're going to focus on the base particle system, the one that goes almost all over the, the body. Koro has four in total, so we're going to begin with this basic one. So the first thing to do is to apply the mirror modifier so we can have one whole mesh because the particle system works better that way and we can comb the hair better and everything is better that way. So let's just add a new particle system, hit plus. Then if you run an animation by default, you will see particles coming off of your character. That's because by default, the particle system type is an emitter. We're going to change that to hair. And really long by default, it's number four. Yeah, four blender units. So let's get it low, a bit lower even. Point 0.5, that's okay. We're going to change that later anyway, but... So by default, this particle system has 1,000 particles, parent particles, but that's not really enough. So instead of increasing this number, we're going to add children particles from the children panel in the particle properties. But as you can see, the particles are all over the body and inside the mouth. So to fix that, we're going to limit this particle system to a vertex group. So first let's make it. In the mesh properties, add a new vertex group, name it properly. Then let's switch to weight paint mode. And then just paint over your character. But first enable lex mirror and topology mirror, which is important. So you can only paint on one side and it will automatically be applied on the other side. Now let's tell Blender to use, to actually make use of this vertex group for the particle density. So for that, let's go to the particle settings, vertex group panel, and then in density, choose the group that you just made. So now you'll see that wherever you paint, you'll have particles. So you're like painting hair, but manually painting a whole body is not really fun. So since we have, we want hair on the entire body, let's do it this other way. Just in edit mode, select the vertices you want to have full amount of particles over there. But under the vertex groups panel, you will see that when you are in edit mode, new buttons appear. With your mesh selected, you're going to hit assign, and this will assign the weight that is specified on the slider below. In this case, it was 1.0, so it's, it's like total influence over the selected vertices. So that means that red has full influence. This is like a heat map. Blue is no influence and red is full influence. But you can still paint over your vertices there. And maybe add some more. So red means full influence, a lot of particles, and yellow means less, greens, green means even lesser, and yeah, blue means nothing. At this point, we could already render, but first let's enable the strand render, so particles will render much faster and we can have much more, uh, a bigger number of particles. In the same panel, you will find a random slider that you can use to randomize the length of the particles. So some of them will be lo longer and others will be shorter, all relative to the actual hair length that you specified up there when we just added the particle system. So at this point, we can already render. And yeah, it doesn't look that, that nice uh, because of two things. First, we don't have enough particles. And second, some of them are pointing towards the camera. So they don't look good. You can see through. And that's not really nice. Let's fix that. First way is just to comb them. For that, we're going to switch to the particles mode. Let's change our brush to comb because otherwise it's unknown. doesn't make any sense. And before starting, let's enable children from the options. And now if you click and drag, the shortcuts are the same than before, the same for F for uh, the size and Shift F for the strength. If you click and drag, you'll see that we can comb our particles now, which is very nice. If they are too close to the mesh, you can use another brush called Puff. 
with this brush, particles will look more a bit more natural. All messy, nice. So that should already help a lot, so we don't see much of the actual skin beneath the particles. Mm, still we see some, so let's increase the render amount from 100 to like 250, for example. That will give us, if we have 1,000 parent particles, which is the default, and 250 children, then that would mean we have 250,000 particles, which sounds like a lot, but it's, it's not actually. You can even add more, and it will still render fast because it's a strand rendering. So this looks too perfect. He's too perfect, but he lives outside. It shouldn't be that perfect. So let's fix that by playing with the random value on roughness, on the roughness section on the children panel. And as you can see, the more you push it, the more messy you get the hair gets. Let's uh, change the random length and let's make it be splines. So they render a bit nicer. That makes the, the strands render uh, a bit nicer at the cost of some render time, of course, but it's not that much. So let's add a material specific for the particles. We already had one, but we're going to specify one just for the particles because they have a special setting. So let's add a new material from the material settings. New, name it. And first to see the effect, let's change the color and assign it. It, since it's number two on the list, we're going to specify that on the render panel in the particle settings. Now, as you can see, that's the actual thing, the actual material. So materials have a special section for strands particles. They have their own panel under the material settings. And let's enable the particles preview. And the first option you want to enable is Blender units. I think this should be on by default. Why? Because if you don't enable that, Blender will render each particle the size of a pixel amount you, you give it. So if the size is in pixels, then when you're far away and you have a lot of particles, then you have a lot of pixels. Of course, that makes sense. But it looks a bit fuzzy. But if you get really close, the pixel size is still the same. So even when you add a lot of particles, it will never be completely full. But if you use Blender units, Blender will use, ah, of course, Blender units, that grid you see on the, on the floor, as a reference. So it's independent of the view. If you are really far or really close, the size will always remain. So for example, 0 0.1 Blender units is a good size overall. You can render and check. Yeah, that's good enough. At the tip, I always use the smallest value. By default, the shape of these particles is like a triangle, like a cone. But you can tweak that with the shape slider. Negative values will give it a more uh, pointy shape, while positive values will give it like more rounded, more like a feather. So there you have a bit more control over it. Let's make the render a bit bigger and use the border render. This is shift B to draw this red square, red box from the camera view. If you want to remove it, just click on the border button on the dimensions panel in render settings or just make a little box outside of the camera view. So we took the shape and the size of our particles. Let's change the alpha so they blend better with the background. Go to textures, add a new one. Let's select a gradient, which is the blend texture. And preview both so you can see. And as you can see, by default, it's mapped along the object. So that's actually like a plane emitting particles. So we don't want that. Oh, by the way, it's pink because of that, because of the influence. So we don't want that. We want to map it 
to each particle. So we're going to change it from the mapping panel, coordinates, strand, particle. So that means that we're going to map it from uh, the root to the tip of the particle. To play with the colors in this texture, we're going to enable the ramp option on the colors panel. And then you have the color band widget, which has little points that you can click and drag to reposition. If you click, you get information about their color and alpha transparency. So if you want to switch them, you can just press the little F button there or just uh, move them and shift them. So now I got the white color on the root and then it goes to black, but it's transparent. So let's make it white transparent because otherwise you still have some gray values in the middle, which you don't want that. So we don't want the color. We actually want to change the alpha only. So for that, let's go to the influence panel, disable color, and let's enable alpha under it. So why I'm changing the alpha, but it's still opaque. Why? Because the material itself already has alpha one. Instead of changing the materials alpha to zero, let's just make it blend instead of mix. Let's make it multiply. So it's going to multiply the alpha of the blend texture on top of the material one. So the material alpha can still be one, which is good. Let's see how it renders. Nice. Now let's change the color a little bit so we can see it better. But it's much nicer because the tip of each particle is now blending better with the background. It's transparent now. There, much nicer. Still, you don't see it that well. Let's uh, fix the lighting. Uh, let's switch that horrible point lamp by an awesome spot lamp um, spot let's move it around just default things I always change like the VS in one is too much it's not really precise so let's get it down to 0.2 or 0.3 let's get the clip start a bit closer by changing it from either the shadow panel or hit W and then clip start and move the mouse. So Blender will begin calculating the shadows only where this clip start begins. Better, let's change the spot size, W again for the specials menu, then spot size. And now let's change the fall off. By default, the spot fall off is inverse square. So that basically means that the closer you get to the lamp, the more bright it will be. So that's not really realistic if you want to make uh, outdoors lighting, like a sun or something like that. So I like to switch it always to constant. So no matter if my character gets really close to the to the lamp or really far of the lamp, the light will always be the same. It's, I feel it nicer, except you're actually trying to fake interior lighting. Keep in mind that when you have fo uh, constant fall off, the lamp gets much more intense. So one energy is actually much more. You see that some particles are more bright than others? That's the specularity. We can tweak that. I'm going to change the shader model to Ward ISO. I like it better for particles. Maybe not that strong. Let's change the slope. Okay, that's a bit better. If the render starts getting slow and you're using ray trace stuff like ambient occlusion or ray trace shadows, then it's a good thing that you disable in the particles, disable traceable from the options panel in the material settings. That will make it so tra the ray tracing doesn't care about the particles and it's much, much faster. Of course, you lose some lighting, but it's faster. The random value that we took before, the messiness value, if you want to call it that way, by default affects all of the particles. But if you play with the threshold value, you will get that percentage lower, like some particles will have more of this roughness effect and some of them will not. So that's nice to give it some more uh, visual noise, which is nicer. The random effect depends directly on the resolution of your particles. By default, your particles will have three steps. That means each particle will have like three keys, three points. 
And where do you see that? You see that in the render settings, the steps slider. But you only see that at render time. If you want to change it on the display for the 3D view, by default it's two. So you actually, what you are seeing in the 3D view is not what you are rendering by default. But you can change it from the display panel. Just play with the steps. You'll see that the further you go with that value, the more defined your shape is. So if you can even put one or zero and there is no breaking point. So there, basically this value is uh, splitting your particle by a power of two. So if you go really high, you will have nice rounded particles, but it will take longer to render, of course. But that will allow you to go uh, further with the random option or with the size. You can actually decrease the size to make the core hair more defined. So if you want core hair, just get uh, just decrease that size of the roughness and increase the steps so it will be more defined. If you're just making this kind of hair, then value of two or three is enough, already enough. If you have render time issues, just lower that value since it will make your render much faster. So that's it for this particle system, the basic one. Let's move to the other one. Like